flames, but it's it's you got sparks, and they're just smoldering, and they need to be put out before you get a major forest fire in that office. So once you make a list of the one or two little little smoldering, and I want you to, to tomorrow first thing. I want you to go in there, and I want you to be making honest my list, by the way. and <laughs> candid. That's a big list, see? <laughs> um, but I want you to make a. I want you to be candid. I want you to be truthful. I want you to be straight up. I want you to go in there. I want you to w- walk up to that person, and I want you to confront those unsavory politics directly. <laughs> yep. But with grace. <laughs> yep. That's Hard right. to do both. Uh, principle number four: Don't worry too much, but act when you must. You see, Jack Welch said, the guy who grew GE by four thousand percent as the as the ceo think about the profundity of that jack welch comes in and says it looks like we're not really making a whole lot of money selling refrigerators i know what we should do is we should start making jet engines yeah. people are like ah uh, captain jack <laughs> did, did you lose yeah. your mind ah yeah. like, yes we lost my mind we're gonna build jet engines and by the way we're gonna build this thing called ge capital and we're also gonna buy a tv station a major one Arr. we're gonna put on this show called seinfeld <laughs> and we're gonna make Medical devices are and airport security devices. They say, Captain Jack, have you lost your mind? Yes, 4,000% of the time he lost his mind. The company grew by 4,000% because he was known for making the tough call. But the the, the principle is don't worry too much, but act when when you must. A lot of entrepreneurs are working all day, and they're coming home, and they're just stressing. They they, the work day doesn't end. They lay in bed going, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? How am I going to deal with it? What, am I gonna, what, do you, what do you say to ease the mind, Jeff, of an entrepreneur who just can't stop thinking about the work-related issues? I'd say today has enough trouble of its own. Try to solve the problems that you have to solve, just like Jack Welch says, but then boundary it, put it away, take time to recharge, enjoy your life, and then get back to it. You'll do better, have better ideas, be more creative. How do you boundary it? Uh, you decide to make a mental decision to, you make a mental decision to say, I'm not going to let that invade my thinking. Really? Uh, yep. Yep. You, See, how do you do it? You take control of your thoughts. Exactly yep. what he's talking about. You yep. say, you know, no. Psh, psh. Right. I mean, you, you listen. Uh, this is another. This is another earth-shattering. This just in. <laughs> this just in from our home office on the coast, on the left coast of the Arkansas River, in beautiful Jinx America. You, as a thriver, yes, and a driver probably right now, and you drive right. home. Yep. You get to choose. What? what you think about? That's right. I get to choose what I think about. That's right. What? How, I, how, I thought it was a communist how fun country. Is that? <laughs> First you're paying the Pike Pass. Next thing you know, you're paying income tax. I thought we were completely communist. See, no, no, you get to actually choose. You have a conscious choice of what you get to think about, and that is a beautiful what what Mr. Rin just said about you. Just you don't go there. You don't go there. Now it's easy to say, and and it takes practice. And yeah, yeah the first few times you take the bait, you go there, and pretty soon you're like, I'm laying up all night staring at the ceiling, going, I went yeah. there, I went yeah. there, yeah. I went there. But you just by over time and practice and mental fortitude, mental toughness. Can I you, praise my wife? Yeah, absolutely. My wife, one thing she's learned by being married to me for a long time is she knows <laughs> that I, um, if I have a problem. I will. I, I don't need to. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you today the landing page that we make. So people all over the world who want to come to our conferences. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show they're, you. You know why? Because they're, they're awesome. They're awesome workshops. I'm people t- leave and they go, my lives are changed. I am not exaggerating. It's 11 feet long. I made it. It's awesome. You're going to love it. And the landing page is just working. People love it. They're going, oh, my gosh, this, this site is awesome. They're finding Thrive 15. They're booking workshops. It's crazy. And it's like a tenth of the cost of Tony Robbins. Anyway, I'm obsessed with it. So I told my wife, I said, I'm getting up Saturday at 2 a.m. And I'm going to work on that thing until mm-hmm. 2 p.m. And mm-hmm. I am not, do not, I'm just, let me focus. But my wife is so good about when I when I go to bed, she doesn't bring up those things when I'm with the family. She's so intentional. And every once in a while, we, we you know cross that boundary. My wife is so good. When you're married to an entrepreneur, men, if you're married to a woman who's an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. try not to bring up the work during dinner. You know, try not to go, because when you're first married, there wasn't that defined boundary. Yeah. And so she could bring up a business-related problem. I'd re- maybe re- ready to sit down to have my steak at Outback after a tough week. I've totally em- embracing this great weekend. In fact, I'd be at Oklahoma Joe's getting ready for some of those. those oh, those un- baked beans. Those you got to have the baked beans. beans. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to Oklahoma awesome. Joe's getting ready. And then right before I would take my first bite, my wife would go, hey, so did you ever get that um, situation resolved <laughs> with, with Carl? And I'm like, what? What? She said, well, I mean, I thought Billy said that to Carl, and, and I just didn't know. How did that make it you feel? A thing. And I'm like, the beans all of a sudden taste like glass. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I can't, and I can't. But now my wife has done such a good job with boundaries, mm-hmm. and I just want to praise her for that. And I'll just tell you, if you're listening right now, 
you've got to find a way to mentally create those boundaries. Another move I do is I leave my uh, phone in my car at night because yeah. that thing never stops. Yep. When I yep. see that notification come through with 47 missed text messages yep. or whatever, yep. it hurts my head because, see, I really don't want to worry. I just want to be happy, brother. Indeed. Well, you know, you don't worry, but when you have to, you have to with resolve and, and kindness in your heart, but yet the, the sharpness... Right. You have to get in there and take care of it. Note right. or note, don't worry. Right. Come on, Z. Mm. All be, be happy. happy. Yeah. Don't worry. Be happy now. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Hello, Thrive Nation, and welcome back to the Motivation Station. It's Tulsa's only local business radio show. It's the Thrive Time Show, and you can always find it on your drive time home. Because you see... You're stuck in that traffic, and you're starting to say, "I just, I just, I'm t- I can't do politics anymore. I, can't, I just, I know, I know that Hillary. She obviously knows a lot of things. She remembers everything, but she doesn't remember the emails. And I know Trump <laughs> has made don't statements. Don't go there. Don't go there. Trump has made some resist. Statements. Trump's made some locker rooms. Resist. resist. He's made some resist. And I just, I can't handle. resist. I don't know how I'm going to vote, but I look yeah. at the polls and it looks like I might be on the wrong side of the history. And they just, it's just, so you want that political relief. You just want to say, I want to know something that I can proactively do to change my life. And this is the show for you. It's the Thrive Time Show. My name is Clay Clark. I'm the former SBA Entrepreneur of the Year. I'm a father of five human kids. I have uh, about 40 some odd chickens. Uh, I have a lot of uh, trees. I just planted 11 more trees this week. I'm like, I'm Johnny Appleseed of pine trees. I'm planting them so you can't see my house. It's everywhere. And I'm joined here with a guy who has, has really taken his dream of being a successful entrepreneur and turned it into reality. And then he did it again with a different business. So optometry. And then Z, what was the second business from optometry? Sleep, uh, a sleep center. A sleep center. Which Dr. Z's sleep. sleep center, diagnostic yeah. sleep center. And then after Dr. Mm-hmm. Z's sleep center, what did you do next? An auto auction. Well, it makes sense because first it you're doing sense. eyes, you're helping people it's, sleep. Now you want to put crazy. them in a car. I'm out of control. Yeah. And then the next <laughs> one, what was the next one? Uh, a DME company. A DME. A to, Z, a to Z medical. Durable medical. Equipment yeah. company. Equipment. And then yeah. the, what was the next CPAPs. one? CPAPs, yeah. Uh, well, no, no, I take that back. A horse, my horse ranch came in a couple. Oh, the horse, of all typically hats. you would do horse ranch. I've, I've, I'm shocked because really you would want to do sh- horse. Typically if you're an entrepreneur, th- step number 17 of steps to being Dr. Zellner is you want to um, have a, your uh, uh, your horse facility after, yeah, typically, thoroughbred, yeah. thoroughbred yeah. after you do your medical thing. You screw that up. Yeah, I did. Well, you know, I, sometimes I get things in the wrong order. But but you know what I love about you is the extremes of Clay Clark. Mm. Yeah. And for those of you watching yeah. on Facebook Live, you can get to see this beautiful man over here. He's the palest man. Do you ever? Are you? Does the sun does ever hit you, or do you just like run <laughs> from a building to your car? Do you want to know a truthful statement I, I about how I how I repa- run? You just run. <laughs> I want you. To, I'm, I'm working on a new beverage right now that Thrivers are, are at. They're going. I don't know if I want to buy it, but it sounds kind of fun. It's called Pale Mail. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I love the two extremes of you here you are we we had we started an online business coaching school called yep. thrive15.com right which Absolutely. is all around the world now huge yep. a gr- great thing yep. and now we're doing a radio show slash podcast which reaches the entire world i mean you are literally in everybody's ear right yeah and yet at your home you plant hundreds of trees to <laughs> hide yourself so that nobody can see you it's it's just i love you, it do you know why, i love it i love it do you know why i do it yes <laughs> because I wanted to, I, I love the mental boundaries. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you this, yeah. I love being with eagles. So as an example, today, ah, today I'm not going to, I'm not going to make it up. I'm going to pull up my phone for accountability so we can all see here. This morning I set my alarm and it went off at uh, 2:05 a.m. That's yeah. how I woke up this morning. 2:05 Central Standard Time. Yeah, because I went to bed at seven because I knew we had a show today and because I had a big workshop I was leading. And so when I finish the show today at 7 p.m., that will be a 2, so it's 12 plus 5. So 17-hour work day today. Yep. And yeah. to me, that's what it's whatever it takes. So I love my alarm's going off right now. Look at <laughs> that. How I did this. <laughs> my, phone went off, my phone went off at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> really? In Istanbul, I think, something <laughs> like that. So it's, you know, like like 7, you know, here, so, 8 maybe. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, it was 1 o'clock somewhere, though. I promise you that. 1 o'clock somewhere. And, and that's happy hour somewhere, too. Now, here's the thing is, <laughs> I, I, I do that because I, I love flocking with eagles. I love hanging out with people that want to start and grow a business because yeah. I, I didn't grow up around it. And yeah. I love now being around those kind of guys and yeah. ladies. 
Yeah. And people that aren't like that, they wear me out. Yeah. It's harder for me. So what we're teaching today is really therapy for me. And we have a special guest today here, Mr. Jeff Rent. Jeff, can you t explain to people why you're qualified to talk about this subject? Well, I I'm, I'm love working with businesses and working with people to help them thrive. I've been doing that for 35 years and just absolutely have learned how to get there most efficiently and what doesn't work and that sort of stuff. So. I'm telling you, Thrivers, if you're looking for an Achilles heel, you say, what is Clay Clark's weakness? This is it. The six principles to managing relationships at work. I Honestly, this is the thing I work at. Getting stuff done, not hard. Yeah. You're, You're listening killer, to The yeah. Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Workflows and systems, and those those are things that I, I don't have a problem with. And so if you're listening right now, maybe you struggle with getting stuff done, but you're good with relationships. But you have to know yourself and be aware. So this next principle is you don't want to worry too much, but you must act when you must. Again, somebody listening to this right now who's struggling to turn to take the action, to Fire the person. Worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so. You're so mean. <laughs> or just so mean. Nope. Or no, before that, favor. you write them up. <laughs> Someone who struggles to even mm -hmm. write somebody yeah. up. Yeah. I just. I want to tell them, but well, should you just give them a cupcake and say, D "Do better"? Yeah. So or, this, or you're doing a, you're doing an okay job. So Jeff, here's the scenario. I know I need to write somebody up because they broke dress code, and this mm -hmm. is what I say. Mm -hmm. uh, Z, Z, uh, Z, can I talk to you real quick? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. What's up, man? Oh, uh, your tie. I didn't. You didn't have a tie on today, in our. Oh, I bro. I've got a. Yeah. I, well, I had one on, and then man, I spilled some of that cupcake, you know, on it, and I had to take it off, bro. Oh, are you okay? Um, uh, bro, it's really not that big a deal, right, bro? I mean, what's the big deal about a tie, bro? I, I mean, I seriously, I are you hung up on that? I appreciate your Instagram account. I hope you like me. Yeah, you know, right, so, right. so what, what advice do you have for the boss who just struggles with any kind of confrontation at all? Yeah, it's not personal. Hey, Bob, got a dress code. You're not dressed. Don't really care about the reason why. We do that here because we have a reason we're trying to do it, and there's the reason. So principle number four. Yeah, what's up, Z? What? Oh, I want to tell you something. Okay, what is it, Z? I'm going to tell you something in life. Tell me what it is. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse because <laughs> you know what? Why do you? It's, it's nothing personal. It goes, it's, yeah, just, right. it's just business. Yeah. It's just business. Yeah. You're going to yeah. be sleeping in the lake with the... Yeah, with the, <laughs> yeah. when it comes to killing people, that gets <laughs> with personal, the, with the boys and with girls. The fishes. Yeah, it's not the personal, just business. Now, so principle number five, though, is you, is you must be transparent yeah. about your communication. Now, this is something that I want to share with you because um, Jack Welch, he says this quote, he says it so beautifully, I'm going to read what Jack Welch wrote. He says, underneath, you would surely see that the best care passionately about their people he's talking about top leaders yeah. underneath you would surely see that the best care passionately about their people about their growth and success and you would see that they themselves are comfortable in their own skins they're real they're filled with candor mm -hmm. and integrity mm -hmm. optimism and humanity mm -hmm. jack welch so that's the ceo grew ge by four thousand percent see why can't you blind copy people on emails as a boss why can't oh you my gosh stop sneak it around? This wears me slick because when you do that, you just you, you strip away integrity. That's you're right. just being a squirrel. <laughs> That's right. And if you're a squirrel and you're the head of your business, guess what? Bite you're it. saying, hey, it's okay to be a squirrel. Can I tell you my yeah. move? Like that's the right. squirrel that's on your desk. You watch a Facebook Live. You can see a stuffed squirrel. Can I tell you the move I do a lot? Oh, if someone ever BCs me, I always CC all. I respond to all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah that's I the always move. do that's it. That's the move. They're and just then, like, what, I, I did what? What are you doing? It happens a lot. I oh, do yeah. it probably once a week. Oh, yeah. every, it stops it, doesn't And it? every time they go, that was not, you're supposed mm -hmm. to be BC'd on. And mm -hmm. one guy wrote back, oh, blank. You were supposed to. Yeah, it, BC means blind copy. So yeah. what they do is you're, is you're communicating with another coworker. Yes. And so then you sneakily want somebody else to see it, but you don't want the coworker to know that you're sending it to them. So you blind copy them. And the best example was oh. I responded to all. I said, hey, uh, I, I'm not sure how to handle it. Why don't you talk to them directly? And they responded, oh, crap. I wish you, you, you that was supposed to be blind copy, but they accidentally responded all again. Oh, yeah. And it's just so good. <laughs> yeah. And I just That's love great. candor. Yeah. It just keeps getting better. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk about principle number six, how to set that expectation that change is inevitable. Change is going to happen. You've got to set that expectation that your business is going to grow, and so change is absolutely inevitable. You've got to have that faith. Live, local, now. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. What is going on, Thrive Nation? You have found your show. It's the Thrive Time Show on your radio. And I am your Broda from Minnesota, sent here to give you that knowledge that you have been seeking since college, maybe before college, maybe you just went to college and you said, 
I've got that degree, but now what do yeah. I do? I mean, we are here to teach you how to start and grow a business 